This cake is fun to make. Wait till you see how we get into this. It's easier than you might suspect and provides one of the most delicious cakes you'll ever eat. Today, I'm making pound cake. Now, I did that last week, all right? I put out the original pound cake recipe. And it was a, a recipe that I pulled out of a very, very old cookbook. And it was a very old recipe even then. Okay, so pound cake's been around for a long time. Centuries, you could say. And that's exactly correct. This pound cake recipe is a little different. This is my family recipe for pound cake. So my mother passed this on to me, and I believe she got this from her family. It's an excellent recipe. The ingredients and the quantities of ingredients are just spot on perfect for making a gentle, moist, velvety cake. The flavor on the chocolate isn't that deep chocolate. It's not the, the, the kind that's overwhelming. It's not that kind of a chocolate cake. This is a light chocolate cake. The, the flavor of chocolate isn't overwhelming. It's full and it's rich and it's got the right flavor, but it doesn't knock you backwards with chocolate. Instead, it kind of invites you just to take another bite. Folks, this is a delicious chocolate pound cake. I'm looking forward to showing you this recipe, but before we go in the kitchen, please take a look at the links down in the description box. You're going to find the written recipe for this. Um, those are all on my website along with a lot of other recipes and I'm building that. I'm going to eventually have all of my recipes on there, so please be patient with me as I work on that. Right now though, we need to get in the kitchen and get busy making a pound cake. Let's go. Come on. Something I wanted to mention quickly for anybody that is a novice cook or if you are new to cooking, I want to give you a quick lesson on this real quick. Um, and and if, you, if you're a good cook, please just bear with me as, you know, not everybody is on the same level. So let's, let's start with the, the guys that haven't done this yet. Okay, so when you're measuring out dry ingredients, you got this kind of a measuring cup, not the kind that has a handle that you pour liquids. That's a liquid measure. A dry measure works by A, we scoop up our ingredients, and then we level our ingredients. Now sometimes there can be an air pocket, and bakers will tell you, don't do this, but I do this. See, once it's all nice and level, I wanna make sure there was no air pocket, so I just tap it, just like that. See, nope, didn't drop, so there's no air pockets there. Now I pour it down into my bowl, and we always measure out all of our ingredients before we do any baking, okay? So get this done first. Now you might say, oh, well that's gonna, if you're an, an experienced cook, you might say, chef, you are causing the flour to be compacted. You know what, if it's the kind of cake that I need to worry about that, I'll sift it, all right, I'll re-sift it. But for this little lesson, we're trying to teach not to have any air pockets down in your flour. And this is a good quick way of learning that lesson because it does happen as you very well know. There we go, you don't have to tap it hard. There we go, so. That's what we do when we're measuring out all dry ingredients and you notice how I had a scraper so I get a good even level measurement. Do that with everything on the ingredients and then you'll have your cake ready to go once all your ingredients are measured out. This really is important to do it this way. As you've just seen I used a straight edge like this to make sure my measurements came out level on that. Sometimes the packaging comes with it built in like this. This is my baking powder can and you can see there's a, a straight edge on that and that edge is for what I just did there which is measuring out the exact amount of baking powder that I'm going to need. So that's what they put that there that's what that's for. When you're measuring out your dry ingredients in spoons you will need to do the exact same thing. So if I'm measuring let's say cocoa and I'm using the tablespoon measure, I will then put too much cocoa in this, scrape off the excess, 
and then what's left in this is the amount that I need, all right, or multiple times. So that's how I'm going to measure out that. Make sure that when you're measuring that your measurements in baking be somewhat accurate. If they're not, well, you could end up having problems with what you're trying to make. The ingredients that we're going to be using today, these are excellent ingredients, but very basic to cake making. I've got flour. This is an all-purpose flour. Sugar. And this is basic cane sugar. It doesn't have to be anything special, folks. Eggs. Milk. And don't use anything special here, just plain whole milk. Vanilla. Salt. Baking powder. And then if, in case you're wondering, this is double-acting baking powder. Cocoa and butter. Makes for one delicious pound cake. I need to sift my dry ingredients together for this cake. Now sifting means running the ingredients through a screen, okay? Now this is a sifter. There's a screen in the bottom and these little tines that when you rotate the handle help to work the, the flour or whatever else through that grate at the bottom. Now if you don't happen to have one of these, get you just a plain, okay, one of these right here, a strainer, will do the same job. Put your flour in here and tap the handle with a spoon or something. It'll sift everything the way you need it, okay? But we need to sift our dry ingredients, not including the sugar. So if I'm going to sift my ingredients together, in case you've never baked before, that is a way of A, making sure that the dry ingredients are loose, all right? And that there's air amongst the dry ingredients which makes the cake a little lighter and a little fluffier. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Also, it helps to mix together those dry ingredients. So, as you can tell, what I'm doing here is I'm placing all of my dry ingredients into the sifter. Once they're all in there, there we go, come on. Then, I'll sift it through, and frankly, I'm gonna have something easier to work with and you're gonna see in the bottom of the sifter what this thing does when it comes to removing lumps and stuff like that. There we are. And if you look in the bottom of this, you can see how when it's sifted out, the grains fall apart. It all works really well. If you'll look in the bottom of this, you see the lumps that are down in there? Those little lumps, cocoa lumps, and I see some white lumps too. It could be flour, it could be the salt, it could have been that baking powder. Don't know what, but I don't have lumps in my cake because I ran it through a sifter. Hey, isn't that wonderful? It's a smart reason to use one. Now I've cracked my eggs. I need to break the yolks and beat them. I don't have to go crazy on it, but they do need to be beaten. See there? There we go. There we go. That's where I needed to take them, right there. Well combined, but you don't have to go nuts any further than that. Just get that butter down into this bowl. Now you need to make sure your butter is softened. It needs to be about room temperature. If it's room temperature, this creaming process will go quickly. If it's cold, it won't happen at all. You've got to bring up the temperature so the butter will be soft enough to work, okay? Because we have to do what's called creaming it and that involves softening it even further. Yeah, I'm starting that butter. Now I'm gonna start this on a low speed. A couple things you have to know. Keep your fingers out of the bowl. Keep your hands out of the bowl. These things, especially the big ones like this, are known for breaking small bones, okay? So keep those little bones out of there. When and if you need to reach down in there, use one of these and turn the machine off first. Because if you put your spatula in there with it running, the same way it'll break your fingers, it will break your spatula. So do not let it do either, okay? Make sure those heads are locked before you start them. As your butter starts to get soft, we can bring up the speed a little bit. There we go. Now I'm at the third speed. 
You see how it's throwing the butter off of the beater now and it's starting to work it. Now this is what we need and we're going to develop volume and it's going to soften it. Now the volume part, this is important. Part of what makes a cake rise is the air that was already in it before it was baked. So double acting baking powder, when you first mix it in, has a initial reaction that starts to put off carbon dioxide, giving that gas inside of the cake before it's even baked. After the heat hits it, then it goes through a second rise in the oven, which is why they call it double acting baking powder. Now occasionally, whenever you're working with a mixer, okay, you need to clear off what is on the beater, okay? And that's the first thing to do. And the second thing to do is to take the bowl and take it and turn it and break loose any material that may be against the bowl itself. Now I'm turning this sideways so you can see it better. I don't normally do that that much when I'm working it, but I needed you guys to see what's going on in the bowl. So, I got a mess back here. Very good tasting mess at that. I'm gonna let that cream just a little more. So as you've seen, it was only about a minute of creaming time. This has turned lighter in its color. It's very soft. This would be perfect for spreading on rolls or muffins or something like that. Oh, how good, right? But hey, we're gonna be doing something even more special with it, and that's making this cake. Something I wanted to mention to you is if you're gonna make additions such as sugar, flour, eggs, milk, whatever, whenever you're putting something in there, make sure that the mixer is not running or is on low speed. Either way will work. Um, they do make a shield that goes on these that works really nice. I have one of those. Terrible for filming, but they're handy in the kitchen. Now, I want to go ahead and work that sugar in first, and then I'll cream it. And it will only be a few seconds of that and then I'll add more sugar at a slow speed. There we go. Like I said, just a few seconds worth. It was... Put in a little more of the sugar, and you notice how I leave it running on slow while it takes the sugar in. I don't turn it on high, or turn up the speed, rather, when I'm taking in ingredients. So, again, even though I have creamed in that sugar, I have to go in and scrape the bowl. Now this is a perfect example of why it's necessary. Look on the side here, you see where that's been pushed up? Now what's been pushed up is not mixed as well, see where it's mostly just butter, where here it's still real granular. Okay, so I gotta get everything mixed evenly. So this is necessary. There we go, all right. My butter and sugar are well creamed together. The volume has come up considerably, and as you can see there. So what I want to need to do, I want to start working in my other ingredients. Now, if you're not used to baking, here's you another helpful hint. Take you a little measuring cup and use it as a scoop for your dry ingredients. You see there, just like that. And you'll still make a little bit of a mess, but it won't be as much of one. I've already spilled a little down here. You're gonna get some on the edge of the bowl. It's also smart just to keep a small towel or something like that handy in the kitchen for as these little messes happen, just catch them and clean them up as you go. These liquids are easy enough to get in there. And so what I wanna do is I just want to get all of my ingredients in. I'm gonna alternate back and forth in between them. Simple enough. See there, we always start on the slowest speed and be careful not to put in too much at once because it will knock it out of the bowl if you do. We add small amounts at a time for this reason. Now this is where we can see how mixers are truly handy in the kitchen. You can do this by hand, but I've done it by hand and I'll say this, it's plenty of work. <laughs> so if you're going to do it by hand, be ready for that. At some point, this is going to get low enough, you can just start working the flour in, just like so. 
Some things in this recipe that are different from the original pound cake recipe. The original pound cake recipe didn't have milk in it. Okay, and had a lot more eggs. All right, relative to the amount of flour. <clears throat> it was a considerably different recipe. And of course, it's based on the measurement of the pound. As you can see, there's dry ingredients on the top up here. Well, once again, that just kind of points out the importance of doing what I'm doing right here, which is scraping that bowl. And you might be thinking, well, if you're going to have to scrape the bowl all of the time, why use a mixer? Well, folks, this mixer in a moment is about to do 10 minutes worth of beating that, frankly, by hand is a lot of work. If you use the mixer by itself, well, it takes all the work out of it. So each and every time we do that, now that we're at the end, we need to go ahead and give this a full mix. And I'm going to turn this on and let it beat for about 10 minutes. There we go. Now, that's where this gets a workout. It's gonna be 10 minutes of a nice beat down, just like that. So after 10 minutes of beating it, and I'm gonna probably stop and mix that with a spoon in five minutes, we're gonna get it in the bunt pan after 10 of this. When it comes to pound cakes, you're gonna see a variety of different pans. These bunt pans come in all kinds of different shapes. When you get right down to it, the number of different shapes is just staggering. The basic bunt pan, well, it's all right, but people are getting kind of tired of that one style. I wanted to show you a couple of styles. These are the two bunt pans that I have that are very nice. And one of them is this one right here. Absolutely gorgeous bunt pan. It produces a cake that is truly stunning in its shape. Okay, and the detail on the cake matches that which you see on the outside of this pan. It's identical to it, and it's really cool. This one, hey, same thing. It's another pan that's the exact same way. Um, these are both made by Nordicware. Now, I'm not touting Nordicware or anything, but it seems to be the one company that produces high-quality cast bunt pans and so that seems to be who I buy from. These pans are generally uh, covered with a really good coating, a nonstick coating. You can add to that by spraying it if you wish, but it's really not absolutely necessary to grease and flour this type of pan. In fact, that can be kind of a hindrance to the overall performance of the pan. You want the shape of the cake, not the coating you put over it, and that'll give you a powdery coating. So, when it comes to these pans, that is really neat. Another little thing you need to know, not all bunt pans are created equal. Some are bigger than others. This and this do not hold the same amount of batter. The batter that we're making today will overflow this pan, so I would have to make some smaller cakes or a single smaller cake along with this or waste some of my batter. This pan will hold the whole batter recipe. So I'm going to be using this one today. I love both of these pans and they're both absolutely gorgeous cakes. They're very showy. So consider some of the options when it comes to bunt pans. But if you don't have any bunt pans, you can't afford a bunt pan, just remember a plain square cake pan will work just fine. Let's get in the kitchen and finish this up. Come on. The mixing is finished. I'm just getting my beater off of here. And I'm gonna knock off the excess batter, but I'm not gonna just, uh, you know, as I would say, I'm not gonna lose my mind over it. Okay, just get the bulk of it. There we go. I'm going to say this, do not give that to your kids to lick or anything like that. This batter contains raw egg. If one of those raw eggs is even slightly problematic, your kid may be in the hospital with a bigger bellyache than they would expect. 
So don't do that. Down here I have this neat little pan. This is my bunt pan that I'm going to use and this gives exactly this shape when it's finished, okay? Now this has a fantastic non-stick finish on the inside. I go ahead and just give a light spray regardless of that. And what I have here is just some cooking oil that I keep inside of a pressure bottle. This is what they call a misto bottle. It just allows you to spray your own sprays. So you could do this and then dust it lightly with flour and that's greased and flouring, okay? There we go. This way, I get a nice light coating on the whole thing. Works out just perfect. So as you feel the bunt pan, you kind of have to go at it from different sides, okay? So please remember that. Don't dump it all in one place. Now, not all bunt pans are created equal, okay? Some bunt pans will, well, they're smaller than others, okay? So you have to remember certain recipes, the amount of batter that's made may overflow a bunt pan and we are right at the limit here and I still have batter left plenty of it so what I can do with this batter is just make a smaller cake with this on the side what I'm doing now is just simply leveling the batter okay so it gives a nice even bake I don't want the cake to come out wonky and and unlevel all right so I want to get it as even as possible there we go time to get this down in the oven. There we go. Now the extra I had, I put it in another pan. That might cook a little faster. Whenever you're baking, use a timer. These things are worth their weight in gold. Now, I expect the larger cake to take about an hour. Does that mean I'm gonna set this for an hour? Heck no, it means I'm gonna set this for about 45 minutes. I wanna check it, and then if it needs the extra time, I'll add it. But, one thing's for sure, if you cook for an hour and it only needed 45 minutes, you're gonna have a dry cake. The quantity of the ingredients that we used for this beautiful cake today, folks, it's an easy enough recipe. This is three cups of all-purpose flour. Three cups of sugar four eggs, one and a quarter cup of whole milk, one tablespoon of vanilla, one quarter of a teaspoon of salt, one half of a teaspoon of baking powder, four tablespoons of cocoa, and three quarters of a pound of butter. Okay? Just that simple. An excellent recipe. Now let's take a look at this beautiful cake. This cake has been in the oven for about an hour. Now it has domed up beautifully. It's semi-firm on top. I'm going to plunge a toothpick right down into the top here straight into the middle and pull it back out now my toothpick came out clean no batter on it at all okay so it's not wet that means this is fully cooked but what I have to do now is to cool it as it cools it's going to pull in a little bit all right and that's normal let it do that and then we're going to work on removing it from the pan do not try to remove it from the pan when it's hot folks don't try to have hot cake or anything like that if you're going to do cake that's hot you need to do small ones that are individual in small dishes and you serve it in the dish itself but other than that cake needs to cool before it is removed from its pan and that's quite important there we go patience patience 
Now we spoke earlier about, you know, some pans have a nonstick coating and some do not, and some of those coatings work and some do not. And so I want to talk more about that right now. Look at this. This is a very good example of a nonstick coating that just doesn't really work so well. Look how that is stuck to the sides. The cake is pulled free from it as it pulled in. This is what happens if you have a nonstick coating that just doesn't really hold up to its name. All right, and this is the reason I recommend just go ahead, grease and flour the thing. Otherwise you can sometimes run into problems like this, even unexpected. This has been cooling now for a couple of hours. Now it still feels just slightly, and I mean just slightly warm on the inside of the bottom. Now sometimes that means that it's not finished cooling, of course, and uh, sometimes it means it could stick. Now I'm going to take this and pull it off, just A, because it kind of is unsightly. B, this is my little treat I get to enjoy myself, so yummy. All right, that tastes good. Now I need to get this cake from this pan onto this. But here's the thing. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. When it works, you're so happy. When it doesn't, it's like, oh man, this is the very first time I have used this pan. I don't know if it's going to release well or not. So far it looks like it's going to, but that's not a promise of anything. Okay, so hoping that this is going to work okay, I'm going to try to get it to turn out now, now that it has cooled enough. Okay, so two hours of cooling time. Now I'm going to take this and while holding the cake pan firmly, put one finger or two in the hole in the center and then flip the two of them over together. Okay, just like that. Well, there was a little bit of sticking, folks. See there? Nothing major. The cake? Mmm, so-so. I would rank it, oh, I would rank this one somewhere in the neighborhood of a, a 5 out of 10 overall quality. So, like I said, first time I've used that pan. It's interesting the results I've got. It's, it's a pretty little cake. And if I piped in, you know, some like buttercream or something like that into each one of these, that would be so cool. So there's plenty that can be done with something like this. This is good. I'm gonna cut it open. Let's take a look at it and we'll know what we have. Oh yes, let's take a look at our little pound cake. Alrighty, there we go. Looks a little bit moist at the top. Maybe I could have left it in there just a little longer. So there's a bit of marbling right there. Mm-hmm, bit more moist, but it's not bad. It's fully cooked and it's quite good. Mmm, yummy. I've been enjoying this. It really is a magnificent recipe. It gives this beautiful, light, soft texture. It works well. Please enjoy this cake recipe. It's one I've been enjoying my whole life. I love it. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I do appreciate that. If you would take a look at the rest of Texas Cooking Today, there's a lot of videos there, a lot of recipes for you. Just pick your flavor. And if you don't see what you're looking for, please get in the comments, ask me for it. You'd be surprised at how many of my recipes are the result of somebody asking. So folks, thank you for watching. Please take a look at my website. You can get the recipe for this. It's right down there in the description box. And I do appreciate you watching. Thank you. 
Mmm. Mmm. Man, that is good. <laughs>